Hi, my name is Teresa and I'm studying at IST Austria. Today I want to give a tutorial about persistent homology, namely about the intuition why the column reduction algorithm gives the persistence pairs. This tutorial is perfect for you if you already know the definition of persistent homology and you've already seen the column reduction algorithm. But you still lack intuition for why the column reduction algorithm gives the persistence pairs. Maybe you ask yourself, why does the column reduction algorithm do what it does? Or how can I see this in pictures? You give them a filtered simplicial complex. And this just means a simplicial complex where every simplex gets a number assigned, namely the timestamp when it enters the filtration. And we add one simplex after another, according to the timestamps. And we look at the homology at each of these steps and how it changes. So for example, when we add the edge five, then this merges two connected components. So it's the depth of a connected component. And when we continue, when we add the edge eight, this causes the birth of a one cycle. And this one cycle survives for a while, it persists. But when the simplex 11 comes in, then it dies. So we have a persistence pair 8, 11. And persistent homology simply is this list of persistence pairs. And the column reduction algorithm claims that it computes these persistence pairs. How does it do that? It starts with the boundary matrix, which is just a matrix, matrix that summarizes the information which simplex is in the boundary of which other simplex. So for example, the triangle 11 has as its boundary the three edges, five, six, and nine. And therefore in the boundary matrix, we have in column, uh, in row five and six and nine once. When we look at the column reduction algorithm, the first thing we notice is that we add columns. So let's study what it means to add columns of the boundary matrix. When we add the columns seven and eight, this corresponds to the chain seven and eight, which the chain seven and eight, which is simply the curve that starts from four, passes through one and goes all the way to three. Intuitively, this curve has at its, as its boundary, the end vertices three and four. And if we add the columns seven and eight in the boundary matrix, by the way, when I say add, I always mean adding modulo two because I work in the field set not two set. So when we add this column seven and eight modulo two, then the interior vertex one cancels itself because one plus one equals zero. But the other vertices three and four, they survive. So the boundary of the column of the chain seven and eight is three and four like we would want it intuitively. When we add the columns seven and eight and nine, then all vertices are interior vertices and therefore we get an all zero column, which means that the chain consisting of seven, eight and nine has no boundary and chains without boundary we call cycles. And you know that homology is all about cycles, or to be more precise, it's about cycles modulo boundaries. So whenever we form a new cycle, that will be the birth in persistent homology. And whenever an old cycle gets bounded and therefore trivial, this is the death in persistent homology. When a new simplex appears in the filtration, so in our example, say the triangle sigma, the green triangle appears at value V sigma, 
then the boundary of the simplex is already there by the definition of filtration. So the boundary d sigma drawn in blue is already there when sigma comes in. And the sigma is a cycle because the boundary of a boundary is always zero. This sounds a lot like the Steph scenario that we described before, right? We have an old cycle d sigma that gets bounded by sigma and therefore becomes trivial. But be careful, that's only one of two cases, namely the case where the sigma is not already a boundary when sigma comes in. However, there's also the other case where the sigma is already bounded before sigma comes in. And then when sigma comes in, it just is a second way to bound the sigma. So how can you imagine this? Imagine it three-dimensionally. So look at my video, please. You have this cycle, the sigma, which is bounded by black triangles. And don't imagine these black triangles to fill in the sigma flat. Imagine them to bound the sigma in a hemisphere way. And so you have this hemisphere bounding the sigma. And then when sigma comes, that's just another way to bound the sigma. So you imagine it also as a hemisphere. And these two hemispheres together, they form a sphere. So a two homology class. That's why we have in this case the birth of a two homology class. And you can also see this in the boundary matrix because these black triangles, they form a chain and this chain has as a boundary the sigma. But sigma itself also has as a boundary the sigma. So when you add these black triangles to the green triangle sigma, then together this forms a chain that has no boundary because its boundary is the sigma plus the sigma. So every edge in the sigma appears twice and therefore cancels itself modulo two. So we get an all zero column. And so in this birth scenario, we have a persistence pair with birth v sigma, and we don't know yet when it will die. Okay, let's look at the other scenario, namely the one where d sigma was a non-trivial cycle before sigma comes in, and then sigma makes it sigma makes it trivial, and therefore this is the death of a one homology class. So this corresponds to a persistence pair where the depth is v, v sigma. But can we also find out the birth? Yes, we just need to find out when did the cycle first exist. So let's give the cycle some values. Let's just get value 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then the cycle the sigma consists of the edges 5, 6, and 9 which means that the cycle was definitely already alive at value nine. But was it already alive earlier? For this, we have to remind ourselves that we are not only thinking of the cycle, the sigma itself, but of its whole homology class. So when are two cycles homologous? You can imagine one cycle as the as a rubber band, and then you get the homologous cycles by taking this rubber band and moving it, pulling it over already existing simplices, like, like I did here. So this cycle five, six, nine is homologous to the cycle five, six, seven, eight. And you can also see this in the boundary matrix. So we have a column representing the boundary of sigma. And if we add tau to this column, if we add the column tau to this column, then we get a column representing a cycle that is homologous to the sigma. And this new cycle 5678 was already alive at value 8. So we managed to push this cycle further into the past, namely from 9 to 8. If we had more simplices, more triangles now, then we could add these other columns 
to push the cycle even further into the past. In other words, to push the lowest one of this column even higher. But in this setting here, we only have this one triangle, so we have to stop after um, having pushed the cycle all the way to its birth value eight. Yes, so the eight is the birth value because this cycle exists all the way from eight to V sigma. So this means we figured out how to find the corresponding birth value to the death value V sigma, V sigma. Okay, so now we just need to check if the column reduction algorithm does what we just decided it should do. So the column reduction algorithm goes through all the columns, which means it goes through all the entrances of the different synthesis, and it add, adds columns. But it only adds them left to right, which makes sense because to a column J, we can only add those columns that correspond to simplices that were already alive when J enters. And which columns do we add? We add the ones with the same lowest one. Why that? Because we already have these nice zeros below the lowest one, and we won't mess them up by adding a column with the same lowest one, because zero plus zero is of course zero. And we want to get rid of the lowest one, and we do that by adding a column with the same lowest one, because one plus one is zero. So the new lowest one is already higher up than the old lowest one. And we continue like that, pushing the lowest one higher and higher until either we don't manage to push it up higher anymore, which means that we found a death and that we didn't manage to improve its birth anymore. We didn't manage to push the cycle further into the past. Or we managed to get completely rid of the lowest one and end up with an R0 column. That's birth then. Okay, and now all is left to do, all what is left to do is just to do the column reduction algorithm on an example. The columns one, two, three, four are already reduced because they are already all zero columns, which means they one, two, three, and four, all of them give birth to a connected component each. The column five is already reduced because its lowest one is unique. There's nothing to the left with the low, same lowest one, which means that at value three, there was a connected component born that died at value five. So we have a persistence pair from three to five in dimension zero. This is consistent with the fact that we already knew at column three, something would be born. We didn't know yet when this thing would die, but now we know the connected component born at three dies at five. Column six is also already reduced because the lowest one is unique. And this gives rise to a persistence pair four, six, in dimension zero, which is consistent to something being born in four, because we had an all zero column in four. Column seven is not reduced yet because it has the same lowest one as six. Therefore, we add column six and push up the lowest one higher, namely to row two. And here it is unique. Therefore, we have a persistence pair two, seven which is consistent to that we got a zero column in column two. Column eight is not reduced yet. We have to add column five because it has the same lowest one. It's still not reduced. We can push up the lowest one even higher, namely by adding column seven. And if we do that, we already end up with an R zero column. So with the birth of a one homology feature. Column nine, we also still have to reduce by adding column six. And afterwards adding column five to push it, oops, five, column five to push it even further into the past. But by doing this, we already cancel out the column zero, uh, the column nine completely into an or zero column. 
So we have another birth of a one homology class. Column 10 is already reduced. Its lowest one is nine. So we have a persistence pair from nine to 10 in dimension one. And this is consistent with the fact that at column nine, we had an all zero column. So we knew that an one homology class was born at value nine. Column 10, uh, column 11 is not reduced yet. We have to add column 10 and this means getting a homologous cycle that is already alive at value eight. So it, but can't be pushed up further. So it was born at eight and it dies when the triangle 11 comes in. And this is consistent with some one, one homology class being born at value eight. Now, all the birth values, all the zero columns are already paired with some death column, except column one, which means that the connected component that is born at value one never dies. So it gets death value infinity. And this is already everything. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.